we talk about armor all of the time in World of Tanks, but do you actually really know what it's all about and how you can actually avoid uh, taking a lot of shots? And today we're going to showcase how you can kind of use armor to the best of its ability so you might be able to pull off some bounces, albeit against some of those premium rounds. So we're going to take a few examples of different armor types, how you can kind of use it, and this applies to loads of different tanks, regardless of whether you're playing a light tank or a medium or whatever it is, sometimes you can pull off bounces by taking advantage advantage of the armor mechanic. So first things first, uh, let's look at the E100. It's a super easy example of how armor angling works and we're going to look at tanks.gg here and what this does is it shows you a live model of the values of armor um, that your penetration value of your tank goes up against. So if you've got 100 millimeters of penetration on your tank's rounds uh, that you see in the garage, and then you compare it to the armor model of the tank, for example, this value here is what the actual armor value is, and therefore your 100 millimeters just purely won't go through the front of this 210 millimeters and you see as you start moving around it varies dependent on the angle and as you start moving so what we want to do is see how the armor actually works and at what point um, does it change so one thing that everyone always talks about is you can angle your armor but what does it actually mean well angling your armor is super simple it's just the case of well look at the frontal profile if you've got an e100 for example well the lower plate is 226 millimeters at the moment you know varying from like 220 um if you're looking in this position. Well, what happens if you, for example, want to increase your armor, what you can do is you can turn your tank and that 220 millimeters now becomes 250. So just by literally moving your tank, so for example, if this is the top view and you're looking at someone else, you'd want to turn slightly so that the person in front of you is over here where my mouse pointer is and therefore um, you've got this kind of angle. So if we look at that on the front, this is what a typical tank will do if you're not angling and then as soon as you start to angle you see this go from green all the way up to that and actually the kind of maximum angle that you want to go at is will give you like 250 millimeters pretty much everywhere on the frontal uh, armor of the e100 this is pc so the armor models might vary but the actual statistics um, or the kind of mechanics behind it are exactly the same on console so you can see what people typically do with tanks that have really solid side armor and actually decent side armor, especially if you have spaced, spaced being this kind of section of armor you can see here where there's like a little plate, a lip that the E100 has. It's probably easier on the actual visual model of the E100 instead. You see the little lip. This is spaced armor. It basically blocks a lot of the heat rounds that will be coming in, um, but it isn't actually part of like the uh, hitbox. So yeah, you might be able to go through the spaced armor um, but that won't necessarily mean that you're dealing any damage to the tank because it's an external kind of part of the tank. But what that means, though, is when you come to the actual hull of the armor, you have to go through that spaced armor to be able to even have a chance at penetrating through the side. So a tank like the E100 does amazingly if you then um, angle like this and say, for example, you're only showing the side of your tank they're not going to be able to see the front. So it, it doesn't matter what this armor value down here is. If the wall or building that is kind of showcasing, they've got to have like 380 millimeters of penetration to go through. And often then your turret becomes the weakest point. So this is all stuff that um, kind of changes dependent on the ammo type. So if you want to go through the uh, kind of side, heat rounds don't typically work. Even though they have more penetration, they get blocked by the spaced armor. So that's something you can take into account. And one thing you also note is that dependent on the round that you're firing at a tank uh, will depend upon the penetration value and therefore um, kind of how often you're going to be able to go through. If, for example, uh, you're seeing here that it's green, that basically means you're definitely going through and uh, you get a chance here uh, but this is for um, the PC so I don't know if there's much of a change between console and PC I doubt it um, but either way um, you're going to be able to utilize the angling now 
What happens, um, for example, if we don't have a tank like the E100 and you've got a bit more of a novel uh, kind of tank that takes something different, like, for example, a Rinoceronte. Now, we have this. This is the Italian um, well, auto-reloading heavy tank that's got a very weird turret. You can see the actual turret. It's probably easier in the visual. You can see that it's just all over the place, isn't it? So how can you deal with tanks like this that also get gun depression? Because you always hear people talking about gun depression, how it's uh, super good, etc., how you can basically use it, and it is off the same premise. So if you're looking at this from the top, it's going to be super easy to go through. As soon as you start moving it, the angle of which this is becomes steeper and therefore you're going to end up bouncing off. So this is the premise that you'll need to know for any kind of tank that you're coming up against. So obviously, if you're looking flat at them, the armor is weaker. If they're then looking at you through a hill and you're trying to pen them, it's going to be harder and therefore you may if you can hit the bottom of their tank that is going to be the best place whereas if you're up in this area that might be one of the worst places to hit them you would be better off going in the uh, turret armor if that's the only thing you could see or the upper hull so these are all considerations you need to take when deciding what to do and actually with the rhinoceronte because it gets like a boat shaped hull trying to angle uh, your hull armor will actually result in probably them more likely to pen you because because um, as you angle, this flat bit becomes more uh, easy to pen because it's rounded. So every single time you move, you can see the green area just shifts. It doesn't reduce like the E100 has. So I just really wanted to showcase how angling works. I feel like it's really annoying when people just say, oh, you just need to angle your tank. But if you know the principle of how it works, whereby, you know, you can imagine, I don't know, when you're skimming a stone on water, if you throw a stone straight downwards into the water, it ain't going to bounce anywhere. What happens when you come really close, really shallow to the water and you throw it like almost horizontally along the water's edge? Well, it bounces sometimes, you know, dependent on speed and stuff like that. Um, and of course, the weight of the rock. It, there's loads of other things that go into it, but that is ex effectively how it works, how the uh, round is able to bounce off of the water and not just go straight through it. Um, obviously, it depends upon the kind of weight of the thing that you're hitting it against if you're trying to do it on a floor it's probably not going to work um, but even still that premise still works because it will still bounce off of the floor uh, and continue on it's literally exactly that so that's what armor kind of the premise is and of course you can use that with pretty much any tank in the game even light tanks if you angle uh, when you're doing your frantic maneuvers and you're having to do something uh, really quickly bear in mind overmatch is a thing so if you've got really low armor you're probably not going to bounce anything um, because you'll just go straight through them uh, so maybe the batch isn't the best idea to kind of showcase that but more of the heavily armored light tank something like um, what we've got here the WZ1 Three two, which has some armor, may be able to bounce a few rounds dependent on what the caliber of the gun is that you're firing it at. So you can use that to your advantage, um, especially if they've got spaced armor uh, and you're kind of angling like this. And you should always, as going towards, if you've got like a, a flat front where you don't have any curvature, moving side to side is a really good way of avoiding any shells that will be coming in or at least increasing your chances of basically bouncing because a lot of times when you're going straight towards someone they have this big area that they can fire at but as soon as you angle to this side they then have to kind of move their reticle to a place where they think is going to pen and then if you're swapping back to this side they're then going to lose the track of where they're aiming and therefore you're going to increase your chance it doesn't work every time but it definitely will help you out and i hope this video did help you out it's just meant to be a really quick guide as to how to how armor works how to take advantage of it and just basically brief you over the mechanics so thank you very much for watching remember if you've got any questions if you've got any queries leave them in the comment section down below and if i missed anything out also leave them in the comment section down below and check out the how to get better at world of tanks playlist if you enjoyed this one thank you and i'll see you in the next one goodbye